Hey everybody, this should be a quick one. We're going to go over how to diagnose a ballast that is blowing your power supply. If you have a projector and it has a no power fault and then you find out the uh, power factor correction or the uh, 400 volt supply to the ballast is not working or you had to replace the main power board, usually that means there's a short circuit in here somewhere. In my experience, a short circuit can be a few places. It can be on the actual output MOSFETs here, or more commonly, I see it on the input MOSFET, or the uh, primary switching MOSFET, I'll call it. The uh, power comes in through here, and once it's uh, coming in there, it goes through a coil, an inductor right here, marked with a 680. And then it goes through, it goes through a few places, but we are looking at this resistor where it jumps across, or where it connects rather, that resistor that connects there. You can see this runs around and goes to that leg right there. After that leg, you can kind of see there's like a, a jumper and that goes through that jumper to here, to the, uh, that's either the source of the drain, I'm not sure. I don't have the uh, data sheet in front of me. But you can see the part number. It's an 18N50T. That means it's an 18 amp MOSFET, probably 600 volt. Uh, and we need something at least 18 amps to replace it with. I have some uh, scrap power supplies that I pulled some 19 and 20 amp 600 volt N channel MOSFETs out of, so I'll probably use one of those uh, if that's the problem. I think that's the problem, uh, only because I don't see any burn marks anywhere else. And with the projector that this came out of, the way the power supply was damaged indicated that there was a, a fault on the uh, primary side of this before it uh, switched to the high voltage. So to figure that out, let's get a meter. And we'll switch it to ohms. And I actually have a known good ballast here that's the same model and I'll show you what we're actually looking for oh actually this is a pretty popular ballast there's the part number there it's a uh, Osram 230 watt you can see it right there PTVIP03 Osram and then it's got that 230 for the wattage and then the uh, Delta or Quartronic numbers that they can be used in so, I'll set that here, and let's go to the bad one. So let's go from source to gate. The gate should be the middle one. Actually, that might be drain. We'll call this drain source, or drain gate and source. I might have that backwards, though. This might be source, that might be drain, but it doesn't really matter. All right, so we got 1.6, 1.5 ohms. That's not good, just in case I accidentally turned on the MOSFET with the meter. You can actually turn these on. Let's just short out the pins and make sure it's not. Still less than two ohms both directions. So I get about a half ohm resistance with these leads. They're pretty long. So then from gate to the other pin Wow, very low resistance. That's a dead short. Both directions, yeah. And then let's go from here to here. This is the kicker. That's no good. Should never have low resistance between gate and either of these pins, I don't think. But not both of them. Maybe from one, but not both of them. So that's definitely bad. Let's look at the good one and see what the good one looks like. So we have infinite resistance from gate to whatever pin one is. And then from gate to pin two, or pin three rather, so from two to three, we have, let's see, meg, five meg that way. And then what, a hundred, 
Wow. Yeah, more Meg that way. And then across should be open. Yeah, no continuity. So that's what you should see. So that's no good. It is held in by a rivet, so I'm going to have to drill the back of that rivet out. You can see, you know, they just stick up a little bit. So I'll drill that out, and then uh, let's reconvene at the soldering iron. All right, here's the replacement. It is a 6, it's a 6R190C6. This is a roughly 20 amp, 600 volt MOSFET. We'll use that to replace the bad one. see if we can oh I drilled the uh, back out as you can see so let's, let's give that ground a little or uh, rivet a little push and There we go. Oh. There's the rivet. And I didn't destroy the heat sink, just little countersink. And now let's see if we can get that. MOSFET out, it should be loose. Yep. Now, the fun part putting the new one in. Hmm. Oh, actually, I got an idea. So, here's my let's see if how well this works. Makes it easy for getting them out. That's good. Let's see how this one goes in. That's not bad. Get it straight with the hole. Legs look good. Then I have a uh, nut and bolt or a screw and bolt for holding it in. and tight. So then we'll bend these back down. And let's check it. So, source to drain, open, good. Gate to source, maybe. Gate to drain, we're in the meg. Yep. 
That looks good. And then we'll check these guys over here just to be safe. I'm not really checking them in any specific way. I'm just looking for short circuits. I don't see any. It's a nice thing about MOSFETs. When they fail, they tend to just short. Kind of wish they went open, but what are you going to do? But that's good. So if uh, you need to fix your ballast, if you have one of these uh, PTVI P03, or even one that's similar, uh, they're all generally the same, just different wattages give you different amounts of transistors and bigger or smaller inductors. So, you know, the, the theory applies across the board. Just follow your power input, look for the transistor or MOSFET that's connected to that power input and start there. Or, you know, just check all semiconductors. Sometimes they're mounted on a board on the side. If they're surface mount, that makes it a little more difficult. But in this case, this ballast will go into my to-be-used pile because that's a good one now. If you have any questions about your ballast, put them in the comments. If you don't subscribe, think about it. Um, but otherwise, thank you for watching.